this video, we're going to walk through two problems related to deferred taxes, the Deferred Tax Liability 2 worksheet and the Deferred Tax Asset 2 worksheet. Let's begin with the Deferred Tax Liability 2 worksheet. In this problem, we're told the South Carolina Corporation has a temporary difference of $180,000 at the end of year 2017. That will reverse in future years and cause taxable amounts in the next three years in the amounts of $55,000 of additional taxable income in year 2018, $60,000 of taxable income in year 2019, and $65,000 in taxable income in year 2020 for a total of $180,000. We're also told in the current year, South Carolina's pre-tax financial income is $300,000. We have a 30% tax rate and that there are no deferred taxes at the beginning of 2017. So let's start solving our problem. We begin by picking up our pre-tax financial income of $300,000 for 2017. We had a timing difference in the amount of $180,000 that will give rise to additional taxable income in the future and a tax deduction currently. So our taxable income for 2017 is $120,000. That's our pre-tax financial income minus the $180,000 temporary difference. We have a 30% tax rate, so our income taxes payable for 2017 will be $36,000, $120,000 $120, times 30%. Let's now go ahead and take a look at our calculations of deferred taxes for the current year and our journal entry for income taxes payable. Our future deductible amounts were given. They were $55,000 in 2018, $60,000 in 2019, and $65,000 in 2020 for the total of $180,000. Our tax rates currently and expected tax rates in the future are 30%. So our deferred tax asset or liability in this case is $16,500 related to 2018. We will expect to have to pay an additional $18,000 in taxes in 2019 and an additional $19,500 in the year 2020. So our total expected future tax liability related to this timing difference is $54,000. Again, we were told our deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year was zero. So if we have our increase in our deferred tax liability of 54000 then our ending balance will be 54000 And we're going to record that deferred tax liability, the increase, on our journal entry down below. Our current income tax expense for 2017, or rather our taxes payable, was $36,000 as calculated above. So we'll take our deferred tax liability plus our income taxes payable, and those two combined give us our income tax expense for the year of $90,000. So again, our income tax expense equals the combined current tax liability of $36,000 and our deferred tax liability of $54,000. Let's go ahead and take a look how this appears on our income statement. Our income statement would start with our pre-tax financial income of $300,000. Then we're going to pick up and disclose on the face of our income statement or in a separate footnote, our current income tax expense of $36,000, our deferred tax expense of $54,000 for a total income tax expense on our income statement of $90,000 and after tax net income of $210,000. Let's go ahead now and take a look at our deferred tax asset number two worksheet. The Blue Corporation has a deferred tax asset account with a balance of $163,600 at the end of 2016 due to a single cumulative temporary difference of $409,000. At the end of 2017, the same temporary difference has increased to a cumulative amount of $479,000. So we've had an increase in our cumulative temporary timing difference. Taxable income for 2017 is $778,000, and our tax rate is 40% for all years. 
no valuation account related to our deferred tax asset is in existence at the end of 2016. In other words, at the end of 2016, we thought we would be able to use the full tax asset or temporary timing difference to offset future taxable income. Let's go ahead and record our tax expense, deferred income, and income taxes payable for 2013. 17, assuming that it's more likely than not that our deferred tax asset will be realized. Recall, we need to have a probability of greater than 50% to record that tax asset. Let's go ahead and begin with our calculations. Again, our taxable income was given at $778,000. We had a 40% tax rate, so our income tax is payable is $311,200 and we record that with a credit to income taxes payable. We're told that our beginning cumulative temporary difference was $409,000, and at the end of 2017, it had grown to $479,000. So there was a $70,000 increase in our temporary difference. At a 40% tax rate, this will give rise to a deferred taxes asset of $28,000. That's the 70,000 times 40%. So our income tax expense for the year will be $283,200. That's the $311,000 payable less our deferred tax asset of $28,000, giving us our income tax expense. For Part B of our question, we're told to assume that it's more likely than not that $28,300 of our deferred tax asset will not be realized. And we're asked to prepare the journal entry at the end of 2017 to record the valuation adjustment. Again, the idea is if we're not likely to realize the full value of that asset, we need to record an allowance. So to reduce the assets, we record a credit to the allowance to reduce the deferred tax asset. And of course, when we reduce our assets, we're also going to need to record an expense, and that's going to be a debit to our income tax expense. Part C of our problem asks us to calculate the net deferred tax asset after our adjustment. Let's go ahead and look at our T accounts for both our deferred tax asset and our allowance to reduce our deferred tax asset. We were told earlier in the problem that the beginning balance for our deferred tax asset was $163,600. During the current year, we recorded an increase in our deferred tax asset related to the $70,000 temporary difference of $28,000. So we increased our deferred tax asset by $28,000 bringing the ending balance to $191,600. We were also told that our allowance to reduce our deferred tax asset at the beginning of the year was zero. We've just recorded a $28,300 credit to increase that allowance, so the ending balance in our allowance will be $28,300. Therefore, our net deferred asset that we report on our balance sheet will be the $191,600 asset minus the $28,300 allowance for a total of $160,300. Again, that's the $191,600 asset minus our $28,300 allowance.